Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head over to America. So this is yet another of the beers that I brought back with me from my recent trip over there. And for the first time, we're going to go to the state of Minnesota, the first ever beer that I'm reviewing for you here from Minnesota. And a big shout out to my colleague Pete as well, who is from there. And this is a brewery that I think he knows pretty well. So for this one, we are going to go to a little place called New Ulm, which is to the southwest of Minneapolis, the state capital and we're having a taste of my first beer from Algus Shells Brewing Company. So this one is the Firebrick and the reason I bought this one was because it's a style you don't come across too often. This one is a, Vien uh, a Viennese or Vienna style lager coming in at 5% ABV. So really looking forward to this one. My friends and I at my friend's wedding we bought a six pack of this so I did taste this before. I know it's pretty nice but I'm looking forward to doing a more in-depth tasting for you here on the channel and I do suspect that this particular bottle might actually be the most well-traveled bottle of fire brick there has ever been. I would be curious about that because it went from the brewery down to Okoboji in Iowa where I bought it it went back from Okobo, it went down to uh, Aurelia in Iowa with me, then it went across to Chicago, um, and then it came on the plane to Iceland, and then to Copenhagen, and it's come into Sweden with me um, to be reviewed now. So perhaps the most well-travelled bottle of Firebrick that there has ever been. Do let me know, if someone from the brewery is watching, let me know if that would, if that is the case, actually. But really looking forward to trying this one for you again, and as always, I hope you guys enjoy my take on this beer. So anyway, as is usual with my reviews, I'll tell you a little bit about the history of the brewery. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that hopefully I can do in the future from Algus Shells Brewing Company. Very first time I'm reviewing one of their beers. I don't know if I'll be able to get a hold of them again. There's all the usual social media. If you want to see more beer reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the play list of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the American beers that I've reviewed for you. That's constantly being added to and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely appreciated. So anyway to tell you a little bit about the history of this brewery then on to my brewery notes. So the Algus Shell Brewing Company is based in New Ulm in Minnesota and it was founded by Algus Shell who was born in 1828 sorry in Durbach, Germany and the old Ulm, of course, is in the south of Baden-Württemberg, a very pretty city that I do recommend you visit if you get the chance. But in 1848, Algus sailed from Germany to New Orleans and then he went up the Mississippi River, eventually settling in Cincinnati, Ohio. And he worked for the locomotive company there as a machinist. And uh, it was there that he met his future wife, Teresa, whom he married in 1853. And they went on to have six children together. But in 1856, they left and went on to found the town of New Ulm, where Algus worked in the flour mill in what was apparently, you know, pretty much back-breaking work. He was fixing all of their equipment and things as well. But Algus was really missing the German beer, so he paired up with Jakob Bernhardt, who was the former brewmaster of Bensberg Brewery, which later became the Minnesota Brewing Company, and together they built a small brewery on the banks of the Cottonwood River in 1860. Now, the Dakota War wiped out a significant chunk of New Ulm in 1862, but the brewery survived, and then in 1866, Algus became the sole owner of the brewery after Jakob became ill. He actually took a fair bit of risk because they put the brewery fully up for sale to ensure that Jakob got as much money as you can uh, or as he could but thankfully Algus bid won and then the brewery um, and the brewery did stay with them. But um, later in life, Algus developed arthritis and he passed the charge of the brewery on to his children, of whom there were six, as I mentioned earlier. But he remained quite actively involved at the brewery and he often relaxed at the Shell Mansion on site until his death in 1891. He watched the animals in the deer park and the activity at the brewery and his sons Adolf and Otto took over the running of the brewery. So Otto decided to expand the brewery and was helped by his sister Emma and her husband George Marty. Over the next few years, they worked hard and up the capacity capacity of the brewery, adding various new pieces of infrastructure to the brewery, and the company became an incorporated organisation in 1902. Otto suddenly died in 1911 at the age of only 49, and his mother was very grief-stricken, and Teresa, she followed, unfortunately, four months later. But after this, George Marty was appointed president, and the brewery remain, has remained in the Marty family ever since then. During the Prohibition years, though, of as is the case with many breweries, a lot of them struggled, and, you know, the, America went from having somewhere near two 
2,000 breweries to having around, you know, six, seven hundred, something like that. So a very difficult time for these companies. But they were producing near beer, which was less than 0.5% during this time. And they were also producing candy, amongst other things, to help the company survive. But apparently they also had a secret brewery for the workers in the basement, which was known as a speakeasy. And apparently these were very common throughout the US at the time. But Prohibition, thankfully, ended in 1933. And George died in 1934, leaving the brewery to his wife, Emma. And it was run by their son, Alfred and their other son Edward became the brewmaster. So Al was also a great fan of music and he began sponsoring the Shell's Hobo Band which were famous for their circus type music and apparently some crazy zany antics as the Americans would put it and they're still active today. Al stepped down as president in 1969 to pass over to his son Warren but he remained active in the brewery until his death in 1977. But the brewery faced tough times in the 1970s as the mega breweries were starting to dominate the market but he also introduced many new beers, he contracted root beer and he also invested in a large hydroponic garden to try and save the brewery but apparently um, there was a point where the brewery was very very close to closing its doors but there was a large black walnut tree on the original brewery grounds that they cut down and sold for lumber and they got a lot of money for that and um, this literally saved the, the brewery from having to close its doors permanently so this one tree managed to save the whole brewery but Warren's son Ted studied brewing in Germany and he used this, he worked at various breweries around Germany in fact but he used uh, this and moved uh, the brewery to an almost kind of German craft type direction during the 1980s and 1990s and he became president of the company in 1986. They opened a new modern brew house in 1999 that used um, that used equipment that was imported from Germany. They got four big brew kettles there which are the big, you know, the kind of typical German flat ones. I believe Sierra Nevada actually used very similar things but in 2002 they bought the Grain Belt beer brand from Minnesota which had been a rival for many many years and they turned this into a friendship and this turned the Shell's uh, brewery into the largest production brewery in Minnesota. In 2010, Ted's oldest son Jace became involved at the brewery having studied brewing in Germany and in Austria and he also has a passion for sour beers and he started the Noble Star Collection a few years later where the first beers were released in 2013. They also built the Star Keller as their new sour facility in 2015 and they opened a tap room in there a few years later in 2017 as well. So this is a brewery that seems to have gone pretty much full circle. They started off at the hands of a German German immigrant uh, they've gone through everything basically and now they're starting to do some more kind of modern craft beers and it's interesting it's an interesting jump to go from sort of German um, Czech Austrian style beers to uh, producing sour beers all of a sudden I don't know if they've really got IPAs and things like that and um, but it's a really interesting jump to add some of these sort of sour uh, Belgian type beers in there but it's it's a very interesting company this one and it's quite unusual I guess to find it in such a small place uh, out in Minnesota and um, there was a lot of German immigrants went out German and Swedish and other Scandinavian immigrants went out to the, the Midwest in America because it's a very similar uh, climate to what you would get in Germany or in Scandinavia. So um, yeah, the other interesting thing to point out about this brewery is if you look at the, uh, the brewery crest and it's probably a little bit more visible on the bottle cap of this beer, you can see that there's a buck deer on there. This buck deer uh, was on the Shell family crest so it's quite cool actually that despite this um, brewery being in the hands of the Marty family for you know what would that be about six generations something like that um, or four, well, four generations of the Marty's two of the shells it's really cool that they've maintained the uh, the original uh, name of the brewery and things like that but yeah there you can see the artwork on this one that is the shells uh, brewery which looks really nice and um, yeah it's like properly German traditional this one it's, it's quite nice it's presented in the same way that a German beer would other than that it's in a, a 330 or well this would be a 12 fluid ounces so I think in American measurements that's 375 the only way they could make that more authentically German was if it, they sold it in half litres so um, yeah really nice brewery this one uh, they've got a whole host of different German style beers, Czech style lagers and stuff like that as well so if you're interested in that sort of thing as I am because my love of beer started when I was uh, living in Heidelberg and with my German flatmate before that um, check out Shell's Brewery and it's cool to find another brewery in America that is pretty damn old so I thought this was quite a fitting one to start off uh, to do my first review from Minnesota but that's all you really need to know about the brewery just now that was a longer history section but if you want to learn a little bit more you can check out the brewery website and of course you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram and stuff Stuff like that but let's get on to the actual tasting of this beer then so I've let you see the the brewery the label art on this one this one is a 5% Vienna style lager and the name firebrick comes from the red bricks that apparently line 
uh, the boilers that they've got in the brewery. I think this beer was introduced back in uh, 1990 before they got their new brew house that they have. So yeah, let's get it out and we'll get on with the tasting then. I'm really curious to see how this one turns out. It says on the side here, Shell's uh, Firebrick is a refreshing Vienna style amber lager named after the bricks that line the old boiler. A hint of hops combined with a subtle maltiness create a mild, pleasantly drinkable beer. So um, yeah, kind of cool. The other thing I guess I should point out about this brewery is that they have a partnership with local farmers that started back in um, 2016 where they grow all their, uh, their grains locally. So a lot of the malt that these guys use, uh, the barley is sourced fairly locally. But yeah, it's so one thing I do need to do at some point is get out to Vienna and have a look at some of these traditional Viennese uh, lager breweries. That would be an awesome trip to do. And one thing I will say, I need to get a new glass. I mean, normally you would serve a Vienna lager in a, in a mug normally, I think. But um, yeah, this one, if we hold this up to the light, this is a nice kind of almost coppery blonde colour, this one. It's about, if you think about the Czech lagers, because most people will think about the Czech and German lagers. This one is somewhere in the region of like a Leitzak lager, you know, it's got that slightly more darker copper because you get the Svetli, which is the very blonde one, you get the Leitzak, which is the more amber colour, the Czerny, which is the Dunkel, the equivalent of the German Dunkel, and then the Tamavi, which is the, the black lager, the German Schwarzbier equivalent. So this one, if we're comparing it to the Czech lagers, the Vienna lager, while it is a unique style in terms of colour and stuff, it is pretty similar to the um, the Czech late sack beer. So yeah, I'm not sure if the Czechs kind of copied that one, if you like, from the uh, from the Germans, if you like. But the first Pilsner beer, the first lager beer, if you like, was actually brewed by a German brewer for Pilsner Urkel, although they are um, a Czech brewery, right enough. But yeah, a nice copper-coloured beer, this one. You can see there's a two-thirds finger of a frothy, I would say, cream-coloured head with this one. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, and a few little ones just heading up towards the bottom there. But in terms of its appearance, nothing particularly surprising about this one. You can get some really nice malty notes off this, just as you're moving it Around. So we'll take a closer look at that aroma then and just see how we get on. So yeah, really nice aroma to this one. I like that and I think we didn't have glasses when we were trying this. We were actually drinking it out of the bottles at the time, which is a bit more traditional in America. I think in Europe we're a bit more into putting the beer into uh, glasses and things. They're a lot more into drinking it out of the cans and the bottles in America. Um, but yeah, this one... It's, the, the malt base in this is really nice. It definitely has this almost... Um, I've always enjoyed German bread, and the aroma that comes out of the malt base here really reminds me of some of these nice German grainy breads. It's got a little bit of a toasty bread crusty note to it as well, which is interesting. You can definitely pick up a little bit of a sweet caramel in there, but that's quite minimal. It's almost more like a kind of... It reminds me of a little... It's almost a little bit honey. You've got a little bit of a McVitie's digestive biscuit in there. I'm not sure how good... Uh, a uh, reference that is for Americans that will be watching this video, but it really reminds me of these McVitie's digestive biscuits that we get here in Europe. Um, yeah, the malty aroma to this one is really nice, and um, it's surprising for me because it does the aroma of this one does come off as being kind of authentically German. I mean, you will get breweries across the world that will brew these different traditional style beers. I mean, I know it with the, my native Scotch ales, if you like. Um, but they always, and they always just smell a little bit different. They use the correct type of malts and you get the correct type of flavours and things, but there are just little subtleties that make that you can tell that they are a little bit different. But to me, this one really does actually smell very kind of authentically Czech or German or Austrian, I guess you would say. You know, it really does have that kind of authentic aroma. So big thumbs up to, um, to Shell's Brewery for this one. They've done a good job here. And I guess if the brewers, uh, you know, if um, Jace has studied in Germany and Austria, you know, that it kind of makes sense, to be honest. But, um, yeah, lovely, nice malty aroma. It does have a little bit of that graininess underneath. As I say, there's a little bit of a grainy spice, nice kind of smooth brown bready quality to it, a little bit of a toasty bread crust, some sweeter caramel, and then you've got these kind of sweeter biscuity notes to it as well. On the hoppy side of things, I would suspect that they're using sort of Hallertau, maybe Tittnanger hops in this one. I can't think if there's any um, Austrian varieties. They might have an American variety right enough that is very similar, but to be honest, I would suspect with a brewery of this size, um, they probably are importing their uh, their hops from Germany for these beers to make them a bit more authentic. And it really, you've got that nice light earthiness, that almost slightly sweet earthiness that you get from German noble hops 
you can smell the nice distinct floral aromaticity and that lighter grassiness in there as well. There is a little touch of fruitiness to the aroma of this beer also. Yeah, it's got a little bit of that kind of almost grassy citrusy note, but there is a little bit of a there's a wee bit of like um an orchardy fruit kind of thing, like a pear-y, slightly it's more pear-y than apple-y, and maybe even just a little touch of like a kind of dried um, berry or something like that. There is a little touch of a red fruity note coming out of this one, but it's quite the red fruity side of things is quite minimal, and um, maybe even a little bit dried apricots, maybe a bit of an exaggeration, but there is a little touch of. Um, a nice kind of dried fruity quality to this beer. So as I always say, take a little bit of time and just enjoy the aroma of the beer before you get stuck into it. But I have to say, I'm getting pretty thirsty now, a little bit like those Germans working in the brewery during Prohibition. So let's get stuck into this one. This one is the Firebrick, a, Vien uh, a Viennese Vienna style lager from Alga Shells Brewing Company in uh, New Ulm to the southwest of Minneapolis in the state of Minnesota over in America. Big shout out to my colleague Pete. Let's get stuck into this one. Slanja Skull. Yeah. It's pretty nice that I have to say. Um, it's The thing you're going to notice about this beer is that it's very, very smooth. And that's what you want from a lager beer. Um, I've found that, I mean, the Czech lagers, if you compare the Czech, the as I was talking about, you've got the Svetli Leitzak, Cherny Tamavi from the Czech Republic, and you've also got the, um, you've got the Pils, the Helles, or, I don't know if you can count the Pils, you've got the Helles and the Dunkel beer and the Schwarz beer from Germany, and of course then you've got the, the Vienna lager, which comes in as being the... Um, the um, the the late sack if you like in the Czech Republic, but yeah, this is a really really nice smooth easy drinking beer. It's a very sessionable one. This, but German beer and Czech beer always is. It's designed to be drinkable. And even if you go to places like Bamberg, you'll see people sessioning these big massive uh, these really heavy Rauch beers and Doppelbox and Maibox and things like that as well. It's incredible how much beer the Germans and the Czechs uh, can put away. But yeah, this is really nice. I mean, this beer, straight away, it gets a big thumbs up from me. Those of you that are more into your, your craft beer styles, your IPAs and things like that, um, you know, this one, this is a, definitely a more traditional beer. It's by no means going to blow the head off you in terms of any of that. If you like German, uh, Czech, Austrian traditional beers, you are going to enjoy this one. This is a very well done, quite authentic, um, quite authentic uh Central European beer, I guess you could say. So let's try and break down the flavour a little bit. With this one, you can feel the nice bready qualities just blank at the middle of your tongue. As the palate dries out a little bit more, you start to get the kind of some of the grainy notes pushing through, but you can also feel in the very centre of your palate, you've got a nice little bit of that sweet kind of caramel note in there. You've got a little bit of the more biscuity, um, a uh, biscuity flavours just pushing out a little bit beyond that too which is really nice um, and it's I mean it's a very simple malt base this but it works it really does work quite well to me there's just a little teeny bit of uh, woodiness coming out to the, of this beer the further you go into the aftertaste I mean it's got everything you'd expect in the malt base of one of these um, Vienna style laggers and it's a, it's a style it's, it's well done this beer and it's a style that you don't come across all that often so if you do have some Vienna style lager recommendations for me, do please let me know in the comment section below. And I'd love to try some of their other um, German traditional beers. I love Doppelbox and I love Helles and I love uh, Dunkels as well. I'd love to try some of their more uh, traditional beers and things. If they've got a Schwarz beer or a, a Tamavi as well, it'd be cool to try that. Yeah, I really like how this one is... Um, it's going together. It's really, it's just, it's, it's, it's like, I love my German beers. I, I really love my German traditional style beers. And I keep saying German, but it's, you know, it's an Austrian style beer, this one. This is very, very well done. Um, on the hoppy side of things then, back corners of the palate, you'll find a little bit of that typical noble earthiness in there. And as I always say, the German hops, they've always got this little bit of a lighter earthiness in there, and they've got this distinctive floral quality, and you can feel that come out on the sides of your tongue. It's quite a smooth floral quality, but it does have a teeny little bit of spice. 
as you get forward, further forward on the palate. And then as you go round the very front curve of the tongue, it's just a little bit lighter and grassy, you know, a really typical thing. I do suspect that this is either Hallertau or Tetnanger hops in here. The other hops you can get these sort of things from would be like the likes of the Lubelski. From, uh, from Poland. Some of the Polish hops really have this noble hop quality to them. You can also get the, the Sats hop or the Jatitz hop as they would call it in the Czech Republic. And I guess you've got things like uh, Dana and Styrian Goldings from uh, Slovenia as well. They can give you a very noble hop type quality to your beer as well. So I'd suspect it's something like that that's in here. It could um, it could well be Czech Sats actually. There's something in my head that's making me wonder if there's a bit of uh, Czech Sats in there. And I guess the Vienna um, laggers probably were brewed with Czech sats originally because the Czech Republic was part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire until like 1918. So yeah, it's um, th this is a really nice, well done beer, this one. I keep saying that, but I really do like this one. I wouldn't hesitate to drink more of this. Um, behind the front curve of the palate, of course, that's where you get that little oily bubble where those juicy, fruity esters start to push their way out of the beer. And for me, this one's very straight up. I mean, it's got a nice little bit of that kind of grassy um, note to it. Yeah, you've got a nice little bit of a kind of grassy quality to it. You've got a little bit of a... There is a little t a very slight red fruity note to this one, but it's very, very minimal. It's almost just a little bit like a... It's almost a little bit just like a kind of candied strawberry or a very slight figgy note coming out of the beer. There's a little bit of a kind of peary ester to it as well and um, you can feel that the front of your tongue just dries out a little bit and you can feel again the further you go into the aftertaste with this beer some of the grainy notes just push their way out of this and it's almost a little bit just kind of along the lines of a toasty bread crust like if you've ever tried German ba uh, German kind of small baked bread and um, it really the the Malt base in this one really does taste like the uh, like the crust that you'll get on these breads. This is a lovely beer, this, and it definitely makes me curious to try some of their other ones. So I maybe need to uh, figure out some way of getting a hold of some more of these uh, these uh, Algus Shell beers because I've been pretty impressed with this one, I have to say. Um, so yeah, in terms of the mouthfeel of this beer, then I would say that this one is. Uh, That's a fairly light bodied beer, this one. It probably, maybe even at the bottom end of mid bodied, to be honest. Carbonation is very, very smooth. It does have a nice, slightly oily mouthfeel to it, which I like too. Um, the malt base has a good balance between the, the smoothness, the graininess and the sweetness. There's a whole host of things kind of going in there. And of course, the, the key things with these Vienna Lagers is just to get them right. Um, nice little bit of hoppy bitterness. I think we're looking maybe around the kind of 40. No, probably not quite that high. Maybe about 30 IBU mark for this one. It does have a nice little bit of uh, of bitterness to it, this beer, which you would want. A um, little touch of juicy fruitiness to it, but that's quite minimal again. And, um, you know, it has everything you would want from uh, a, v a Vienna style lager or a Leitzak, I believe they would call this one, in the uh, the Czech Republic. So, yeah, a lovely beer, this, and a big thumbs up to Algus Shells Brewing Company for this one. Hopefully, I can try some of their sour beers as well. It'd be cool to try some more of the their German style beers and things because I think they've got a Helles and a Dunkel. I would love to try those, and uh, if they do have a Doppelbock, that would be awesome too. But I'd love to try some of their sour beers and just see what the contrast between these is like. But being very cool to review this one. It's my first ever review for you from Minnesota. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. This has been a bit of a longer review. I appreciate that. But um, thank you again for watching. And uh, I hope to catch you guys soon. So let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from the Algus Shells Brewery. And I will catch you guys very soon. The Firebrick, a Vienna style lager coming in at 5% ABV from the Algus Shell Brewing Company in New Ulm to the southwest of uh, Minneapolis in Minnesota over in America. Until the next time, Slanja just now, and I'll catch you guys later. Slanja, skull, prost.